One of the things to remember with your rope halters is making sure you have the correct halter placement. So if your halter's hanging down, you're not gonna be able to control that horse as well as having it a little bit tighter up around the cheeks. But you also don't wanna have it so tight that your rope ends up up by the eyes because you don't have good control that way either. We really like treading in the rope halters just because there's fewer things to get hung up on. Now that being said, I wouldn't want somebody to kind of wrap their fingers in, in the halter. You wanna hold on to this knot. And the whole reason that we don't have clips on our lead ropes is just there's less to get hung up in. Um, I actually had a horse that pulled in the treadmill and hung my finger on a clip whenever I was first working. And so that was kind of where the rope halter idea came from just because there's fewer things to get hung up on. All right. So this guy is an older horse that's had EPM. And so one of the things you've got to remember with working with EPM horses is sometimes it can affect their vision. So they're going to generally be the more spooky of the horses that you deal with. Also, sometimes your older horses are a little more spooky just because they've lived their whole lives without having to do any sort of therapy like this. And so they're not as sure about it as some of the younger horses that just kind of go with the flow. You're okay. And as you can see, he's a little more fractious in here. So a horse like this, it's going to be a little more tense. I want to get that treadmill moving as quick as possible because I don't want his head up. I don't want him looking at me. I don't want him, I also don't want him to lock his feet, which is kind of what he's doing. So when I have one that's a little bit fractious, I want to get them moving just as quick as I can. So as you see him being really fidgety, all he's doing is anticipating the water coming up. He knows the water's coming, and because he's a little more of a fractious horse, he's just upset about it. So he's got his head up, he's waiting for that initial water to come in, and then as you see, as soon as the water starts, he drops his head and goes to work. Good boy. Now with him, because his head kind of comes up, kind of like a seahorse, like his head comes up, I'm going to constantly be working to get him to drop his head and kind of lower lower his head and neck to get a little more even with the pole. So with an older horse, if they'll stand there, you can actually stand still, stand them still and bring the water level up before they start. He would be a little bit fractious and I would be worried about him getting himself into a wreck. So probably I'm going to not opt to not do that on a horse like this. So things I'm looking at while he's in the tread is how overbuilt this horse is in the front. So he has this big pocket right here. He has this big pocket of super tense muscle right there. He also is pretty tense in the top of his neck. So this is gonna be a horse when you're riding him that's gonna really wanna move forward and you're gonna to have to pull on him all the time. Reason being is because with age, he's become a little more sway back. And then you also add in the EPM and the things that he's been through. He's just lost all of this core strength and so our goal for him is to bring that core up and kind of level that top line out. Is he ever going to look like an average horse? Probably not because age works against him as well. But we should be able to build a better top line and kind of pull off the, the gut that you see on him. And he's going to start to move a lot more balanced in the tread. Good boy. Good boy. Ooh. Ooh. So it's important to, when you go to pull a horse off that's a little bit fractious, is getting your bar down first and then go ahead and getting, getting that door open. Also communicating with your person that's opening the door. And I don't want him to just take off. I want him to stop and ideally kind of take a deep breath and just relax a little bit before he just storms off of here. And I want him to wait and woo whoop whoop until I get here so you can also kind of back one up a little bit and now he's kind of starting to lick and chew he's thinking a little bit more and then I'm going to ask him to come off good boy good boy 
other things to remember whenever you're getting a horse ready to go onto the aqua tread if you're using a rope halter you want to make sure that you have one that's that's fit properly and it's snug underneath the cheeks and not hanging too far down because you're not going to have as much control of the horse if your halter's too loose and doesn't fit properly so this horse has been on several times but he's a little bit more of what we call kind of a reactive horse where he's not going to be as relaxed as your average horse that goes on the aqua tread. He's not really what we call spooky, but he also kind of notices everything. And so he's going to be a little more, a little more reactive to any sort of change that happens around the tread. Good boy. He's also a little more fit, so he's going to go faster on the tread than a lot of the horses that you've seen. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. And I always try to make a point to give a command to the horse before I make a change. So if I'm going to increase the speed, I'm going to click to him first and then I'm gonna increase the speed. One of the nice things that I like about these aqua treads is not everything is just an instant. Like when you, when you press your start button, it takes just a little bit, there's a little bit of lag before the tread comes on. And that kind of lets you signal your horse and acclimate to what's going on. It's the same thing when you stop the tread, there's a little bit of lag. The machine doesn't just screech to a halt, which could be really, really hard on the horse's legs. Everything has a second or two delay and they're designed that way just for the safety of the horse and the user. Good boy. Other things we listen for while the horses are on the tread are how the footfall patterns. Is the horse hitting heavier on one leg and not on the other? Do we hear the horse hitting heavier behind? Does he sound like he's kind of stabbing his feet? Does he sound like he's slipping in the treadmill? All of these things can be a sign of lameness, a sign of weakness, or sometimes it can just be user error. A horse that um, isn't as fit and you're trying to make them go faster than they're capable of going has more of a tendency to slide around because they're trying to keep up with how fast the belt is moving. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, so we're going to start another new horse and kind of same principle, even though this horse is a lot bigger. So the bigger the horse, the more room they're going to need. So we're not cutting them off and not getting them bound up in this corner right here or this corner over here. So I, again, I want him to have as straight of a entrance into the treadmill as possible. So since this horse is quite a bit taller, we definitely don't want him looking over the sides of the treadmill. Good boy. We want him to just kind of look forward and just kind of move right on through. Good boy. And like I can tell, he hasn't looked down yet to really see this floor. And so it'd be nice if he would just kind of look down, see that there's a floor there and then move forward. And if he doesn't, we're going to back him away. Back up. Good boy. And then I'm just going to kind of step up here and just kind of show them that there is a floor here. And maybe he'll kind of look down and look at the floor while I'm standing here. And again, you don't want to be caught in the aqua tread with one, especially a horse that you don't know. So now that he's kind of looked at the floor, I'm going to just step him back just a little bit. And then I'm going to step back up and see if I can get him to follow me. Ooh. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Easy. Good. And I like the way he's kind of licking his lips, like he's thinking about everything that we're doing. Easy. And then I want him to look down again. Good boy. Good boy. Other things to remember when you're starting them is if your mats are wet, they can be slick. So we try, try the best we can to keep our mats dry around our work area. 
but when you've got horses coming on and off the tread, you're gonna have some slickness to those mats. So it's important to be aware of that and to not let one get away from you where you've gotta like jerk them around on a long line. Easy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. And we always do everything three times just so they start to develop a habit of knowing they're not going to back off the back of the tread. They're going to always go forward to exit the tread. Good boy. Ooh. Good boy. And if he doesn't go forward you can kind of shake your halter a little and put a little bit of pressure on the back back of the head and so since this horse is bigger it's really important for me to have conversation with my person that's on the back in order to kind of know what's going on back there because I'm having to really concentrate on the front of this horse good boy so I'm working on getting him acclimated and finding his stride. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Another reason we like these rope halters is having these little bit of knots on the nose. That way if you do kind of have to rock a halter back and forth, we do not put any horses on typically with a chain or a bridle, any, anything that could Kind of be deemed unsafe we typically just do the rope halters on everything even the stallions that we put on good boy i think you're good for front door good boy good boy good boy i also think it's important to kind of know what the horse does as far as career wise so this horse is a jumping horse does not mean he's going to jump out of the tread, but it does mean he's going to have a little different thought process of having an obstacle in front of him versus just a normal horse because he is acclimated to jumping, obviously not something that high. Okay, you're good for back door. But this is where it comes into your communication with your person that's on the back. Good boy. Good boy. So no matter the discipline, we all we start all of them pretty much the same. We're just always a little bit more cautious of things like that. I'm gonna squeeze him just a little bit of water. He's you guys scoot up, buddy. Good boy. Um, also, when the water comes in, we anticipate them to move back towards the door. So sometimes you have to move them up a little farther. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of water and let him look at it. Easy. Easy, 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 easy. Good boy, good boy. And the moment he gets tense, I'm gonna stop filling and I'm gonna just let him acclimate to that level. Good boy, good boy. Because it's, it's quite a different obstacle. Even You can have a horse that's really, really good and broke that has a lot of training that gets in here and is really upset about it because there's just, horses are a little bit natu naturally claustrophobic anyway. And then you add the element of a moving floor as well as adding water. It's just a lot, it's a little bit sensory overload for them in the beginning. But I find that this is how we're able to get by. We very, very rarely sedate a horse. And part of it is just by taking the time to kind of assess the situation. We don't hurry them, we try to let them adapt to the environment in the easiest way possible. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And you can kind of use a hand to steady them, kind of like I'm having to do with him right now. It's all right. It's all right. Good boy. One thing you have to remember though too is if you have, if you're using your left hand, you've got to remember it's gonna take too long to cross back over to your stop button or your drain button should something go wrong. So if it's a new horse, I typically have a hand over here ready 
knowing where my stop button is, knowing where my drain button is in case we have a horse start to get upset. But it, sometimes I do have to switch my hand placement simply to balance the horse as well. Because just, just as I can't reach across ways to the controller, I can't balance him this way either. Good boy. You're all right. Good boy. And so with the horse like this, it's wanting to step up and down. He, he's almost over exaggerated his up and down motion. So ideally we want to bring that water level up as high as he will let us because I want him to quit trying to step over the water and I want him to pull through a little bit because what he's doing is he's scooping the water. So he's not necessarily doing a stair stepping motion. He's, he's scooping in it. So he's not striding out and he's not moving up and down. He's just kind of wobbling back and forth. Good boy. All right. And after a few sessions in here and getting some of that foundation of muscle built, this won't be nearly as prominent. Good boy. All right, good boy. Does he need to move up or is he good? Good. Good boy. I feel like the biggest advantage to the above ground aqua tread is having the adjustable water. Not only can you treat horses of any size, like we've had everything from mini ponies in here to big guys like this and 17 hand race horses. And I feel like that's a huge advantage is being able to just treat multi-sized horses and they all get a balanced workout that's catered to them. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So he's still trying to pick his knees up. So we're just gonna kind of keep filling until we break that or until he gets uncomfortable with the water level. We may also try to slow him down just a little bit, but just like when we're starting him, I don't want to get behind his natural stride because then he's gonna get clumsy in here because he's not gonna know where to put his feet. Good boy. So now the water's coming up and probably splashing his belly a little bit. Some of them will spook with that, some of them won't. They're all just a little bit different. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And I'm not gonna worry too much about his head placement on this first session, just because he's not been in the aqua tread before. He's not used to all of it. And so I don't wanna overwhelm him by doing too much with his head as well. So we're just gonna kinda of let him do what he wants with his head within reason today. And then as his horse stays here and gets two, three treatments in, that's when we kinda of start doing the headset with him. You're all right, you're all right. I don't mind them looking down at the water if I don't think they're going to spook and stop. The biggest thing you've got to remember is we don't want to stop any of that forward motion because he's going to come back and hit the back of the door. Good boy. Good boy. And even though he's a tall horse, we don't typically fill over the, this is about as high as we take our water, which is the top of the windows. That is approved to it's not going to hurt the flow of the tank. It's not going to hurt any of the pressurization in the aqua tread. Like it's designed to have the water level go to the top of the windows. And so now his stride gets a lot more even. He stopped trying to pick up and he looks a lot smoother in the water. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And since it's his first time on, we're gonna go ahead and... <laughs> and I don't mind them playing in the water as long as they don't spook and get too far back on the door. So he's actually licking his lips. He's enjoying the session. And I think we're gonna kind of drain him down and just kind of finish on that note. Good boy. Good. Good boy. 
you have to account for your draining time as well. So if you have a horse that you haven't even gotten your water completely full and they're already losing their patience, you have to remember that it takes the time to drain back into the tanks. So it's important to find a, find a happy medium place of being able to start draining before the horse completely loses their patience or before they get too tired. I feel like that's kind of one of the things sometimes people want to put them in and they want to work like a really, really long session with them, but then they don't remember. You've got to have time to get your water out as well. And so if your horse is already tapped out on what they can handle mentally, you're going to have a huge challenge waiting for this water to drain out. So sometimes on a fractious horse, the first day we put them in, we may just simply bring the water up, let them acclimate and bring the water back down. And we call that a win for our first session. If you can always make it a positive experience, the horses are going to always go back to it. Like we have horses that haven't been on the tread in years and they go right back on. And a lot of that has to do with how they've been started on there. Good boy. And I feel like a lot of times having a little bit of extra patience goes a long way to having a good foundation of starting a horse on equipment like this. If you ever rush them or you get one in a bind, they're going to remember that they've been rushed and they're always going to be fractious when they get on here. If you can make it a good experience every time they go on, then they're usually almost always going to go on. So if I have a horse that's like a seasoned treader that's been on a whole bunch and all of a sudden they don't want to go on to the aqua tread, usually I'm hunting for some sort of an issue, whether it be injury, whether it be a soreness, whether it be EPM or some sort of flare like that. I'm always hunting for a reason because if they've not had an unenjoyable experience, they have no reason to not want to go back on the tread. And a lot of times it ends up being soreness. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. A lot of times I will finish the session at a higher mile per hour than I start this session with. Reason being is it's kind of that, you know, back to your basketball analogy, it's kind of training for that fifth quarter. And so statistically where most horses get beat is from the third barrel home, right at the wire on racehorses. And in roping, usually it's drawing the runner out of the herd of cattle. So by asking them to push a little harder towards the end of the workout, I'm able to kind of train them for being able to still surge forward even when they're tired. Now on a horse we're just starting in the first day on, just like this one is, I'm not going to ask him to do anything other than just stay consistent. But as he gets more acclimated to treading, I'm going to ask him for one little extra burst right at the end. Then as he gets even more seasoned, we'll start to vary the height of the water during the workout as well as vary the speed. I always work the horses to distance first, and then I start working on their speed. And even the ones that are pretty seasoned, some days we'll just put them on, say a quick 10 minute, half a mile, and push them as hard as they can be pushed. And then the next day, we may tread a little bit slower and tread a lot longer. It's all in varying your workouts to work on the different muscle groups. Good boy. And you see as the water comes down and gets a little bit tougher with that resistance, he starts to sway back and forth a little bit, and, but he's still not going back to that almost pawing motion in the water that he was doing before. Good boy. Other things you can watch for in the tread are if the horse seems short on one side or for instance if he picks the knee up higher than the other if he's dragging a toe behind or dragging both toes behind we also don't want them to just ride that treadmill back if the treadmill is doing all the work for them that's not advantageous either so we want to make sure they're actually breaking over and taking a step 
This is also where your hoof balance and your shoeing comes in because if your horse is too long and doesn't have enough breakover, they're going to want to put their foot down on the tread and they're going to slide. They're not going to break over properly if they don't have the proper angles in the front feet. Kind of same thing with the hind feet. If you get too long of a toe or you have a negative palm or angle, they have a tendency to kind of want to slap that heel down and not move nearly as correct. So even though we're making them buoyant in the water, your hoof balance is still as important as it is when you're in the arena. Just because one may not be completely lame from unlevel feet in the tread because they're more buoyant, they're still going to have to go back outside at some point. So we've got to get the correct motion and the correct movement initially. Okay, I think we're good. You're all right. Good boy. Good boy. Easy. Easy. Easy, and whoa, 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 good boy, good boy, whoa, easy, good, good boy.